Hello. Today I'd like to talk a little bit about uh, a popular form of filtration that comes up with saltwater tanks, uh, and as well as kind of a comparison with some of the other options that are out there. Now, uh, what I'm talking about is, of course, a sump, uh, and a sump-based system. Um, one of the things I find rather amusing is that a lot of times people go on various different forums, groups, or whatever, asking questions about sump setups and, uh, you know, asking for the purpose and the function. And sometimes people just sit there and go, oh, a sump is a great place to hide equipment. Um, if, if that's justification for owning a sump, I'm, I'm sorry, the people who are saying that are completely missing the mark. Uh, when I look at a sump-based system and the various benefits, advantages, and everything that it offers, uh, honestly, that's actually the last thing that I'm thinking about on my list. Okay? Uh, I also saw a guy who claimed that uh, sumps aren't any more efficient than a canister filter. Uh, I, you'll have to forgive me for laughing at that one, but, but I mean... I, I'm sorry, that just doesn't wash. Uh, you know, there are so many different, you know, quantifiable facts out there that say that that's completely wrong. Um, first and foremost, you know, when you're taking a look at the various forms of filtration, you know, the three most popular, of course, being hang on back, uh, canister, and then sump. Um, you know, you're looking, especially at a, with a marine tank, a saltwater tank, uh, with the rate of flow and filtration. So, you know, usually with a, a hang on back filter, you're maxed out with the commercial brands at about 110. Uh, obviously, you know, you can double up and, and get 220 out of that with a couple of 110s. Um, canister filters, um, most of them run in about the, you know, 200 to 400 gallon per hour range, which is respectable, you know, especially for a freshwater tank. Um, but the maximum flow filtration unit that I've ever seen for a canister filter in terms of aquarium applications is the Fluval FX6, which can put out a, a very healthy 925 gallons per hour. Once again, great for freshwater applications, okay? Um, that said, however, uh, when you start taking a look at sumps and the flow and the filtration rate that it's got, um, you're starting to see a pretty obvious disparity there. Uh, you know, for example, I have what most would consider a mid-range return pump, which is what controls your filtration and stuff in the sump, uh, your, or your flow rate, I should say, your main flow rate uh, control would be the return pump. Now, uh, mine is a Jabao DCT8000 model, which, once again, considered mid-range at best. It'll set you back about $118 on Amazon. Um, its max flow rate is 2,130 gallons per hour or so, give or take a few. Um, so anyways, once again, 925 gallons per hour with the Fluval FX6, which is, you know, a, an absolute beast of a canister filter. And mine is just a mid-range return pump, and it's 2,130-some-odd gallons. Uh, you know, further considering the fact that the Fluval FX6 costs about $340, Okay. So when you're looking at bang for buck and in terms of max flow rate, that means you would need three Fluval FX6 canister filters at a cost of about a, over $1,000 to just barely beat out uh, the return pump that I have that costs $118. Uh, and in addition, you know, you can get a a uh, return pump, from, once again from Jabao, the, the DCT8, uh, 15,000 model, which is an absolute beast um, that pushes out over 3,000 gallons per hour. And once again, that Fluval FX6, even three of them wouldn't be quite enough to meet the max flow rate of that. And that return pump costs about $126. Uh, so, I mean, from a, from a dollars and, you know, max flow benefit 
uh, I'm sorry, you know, the, the return pump um, definitely has a significant advantage over even the best canister filter on the market at a significantly, le significantly lower cost. So, and keep in mind, of course, there are even ni much nicer return pumps, you know, there's ones that are put out by other companies that are, uh, you know, even more substantial than the Javel. Um, so anyways, uh, that's the first thing, is that the flow rate of a return pump versus even the best canister filter, I, there, there's just no contest. Um, second of all, um, a canister filter is filtration, but generally speaking, you know, particularly for marine applications, a sump-based system, almost all of them, have a protein skimmer in them. And an in-sump protein skimmer um, is by far the most efficient protein skimmer available for, you know, the applications in the hobby. Uh, simply because with the increased flow rate, because it runs right off of the return pump line, you know, like if you've seen the video that I have where I do the basic sump system overview, you can see the, it runs straight off that high flow return pump line and goes into a big, huge skimmer with a large skim cup and everything else. Now, a hang-on back skimmer, you know, would work with a canister filter-based application, but you have to get a good one, which generally runs about $150 to $200, which is about the price of an average in-sump skimmer, but it's nowhere near as efficient because, keep in mind, like any hang-on back system, you're having to pull it uh, up and out of the tank and run it through, you know, the bubbler plate and everything, and then the other thing is, of course, generally speaking, um, the, the skim waste disposal cups on those things are much smaller. I remember, you know, when I, if you've seen my other videos, when I ran my 36-gallon Bowfront, I had an eShops PSK 75H uh, hang-on-back protein skimmer. Um, and that cup, every, you know, three to four days, I had to empty it out. On the other hand... Uh, you know, just my average quality Hydor 405 in some skimmer that I run on my uh, current 90 gallon uh, setup with a 29 gallon sump, that thing uh, I can actually get a week to two weeks out of it. And keep in mind, it's skimming a lot more uh, and it has a much larger collection cup. So it takes, you know, it can go for a lot longer without me having to pull the cup out and, um, you know, wiping it out and cleaning it out. So, uh, so from that aspect as well, it's a big advantage because it's, you know, less maintenance. Uh, you're having to clean out the skimmer cup less often. And then, of course, there's the certain obvious fact. The huge advantage that in-sump skimmers have is that if your in-sump skimmer does overflow, well, guess what? It's just overflowing in your sump. If you've got to hang on back and it overflows, uh, you're screwed because it overflows all over the back of the tank and good chance it's going to end up getting on your cords and electrical equipment really bad. Um, <laughs> when I cleaned out my hang-on back protein skimmer before I sold it, I saw firsthand just, thank goodness I had it set up in the garage because that thing was overflowing all over the place. Uh, with a clean out you, that I used on it, but uh, but anyways, I got to see firsthand exactly uh, you know the kind of catastrophe that an in uh, that a hang on back skimmer can produce when it overflows and things go wrong. Um, so it, once again, you're getting a much higher flow rate from the return pump. You're getting a much more efficient skimmer and a safer skimmer because once again, if it overflows, it just overflows into the sump tank and no big deal. Uh, the third thing is that you're talking about the water volume. A canister filter, even the largest one, can't match the additional water displacement and capacity and flow of even, say, you know, like what I've got, like a 29-gallon sump that's two-thirds full. Um, you, it, It's just, it, it can't match that for additional stability, water parameters, and that sort of thing. Uh, it, just because it doesn't have the capacity to hold that much water at a given time. Um, and then if you want to talk about 
you know, getting into, uh, you know, even a bigger sub, you know, 40 gallon, 75 gallon, depending on the size of your setup, there's, there's just no contest. You're talking about a much larger water volume there to help out stabilize your parameters, get all that additional flow and filtration in there. Uh, the fourth thing that I'm going to say as far as, you know, a huge advantage to a sump is that you have by nature a natural, very easy to set up refugium. Um, once the baffle partitions and the equipment goes in, it's very easy for you to simply, and all you need to do, because this is all I did, was grab a, a couple of small handfuls of Chato from your local fish store, and then go get a cheap grow light from Amazon, and then all of a sudden, boom, you have this big, huge macroalgae refugium there because it's going to take off, it's going to grow, it grows great. Um, and in addition to that, you also get the benefit of all the uh, the pods that breed in there. And you know, and if you've seen my other video here, uh, I, I've got all kinds of pods, particularly amphipods, going around all over the place, which are beneficial to helping clean up your sump and. And as well, they go on up into your display tank and help keep that clean and provide an additional food source for your fish. So, you know, you can, once again, you can't really create a refuge. You can kind of create a small refugium in a hang-on-back filter like a fluval uh, or aquaclear as they're known. Uh, but in a canister filter, you really can't create a refugium in them. They're, they're not built and designed that way because you got to have a light in order to grow the macroalgae, and there's just not a good place to put a light in a canister filter. You can kind of modify and, and put one in there, but it, it's, it's just not the same. It's so much easier to set it up in the sump. You've already got the capacity. It's open, so it's easy to get in when you have to, you know, because you have to periodically trim or, or pull the extra macroalgae out of there, you know, the chato out of there. Um, just when it grows in too thick, you know, you just have to keep it kind of, you know, trimmed up or, or cleaned out. So, so from that perspective, it's just, it's so much easier with a sump. Uh, you know, it, it's so much easier to maintain, so much easier to set up, uh, and you've got the space for it already. You know, if you've got even a, even a 20 gallon or larger sump, you've, you've got the space for it. Uh, to set up at least a small, you know, little refugium compartment for biofiltration, which, you know, consumes nitrates and phosphates. Uh, it, one other huge advantage to the sump that, no, that the hang-on-back and the canister filter cannot match is the simple, uh, other simple fact of uh, a lot of people, if you've got a decent-sized sump, they are a great alternative if you need to deal with an aggressive fish. You can put it in timeout down in your sump. It's still a part of the system, but it's not going to bother anything down there. Uh, and to get give it time to get its attitude in check. Uh, good luck doing that with a canister or hang on back. You can't do it. Okay. So from all these, you know, and then, you know, as far as hiding equipment, okay, yeah, you know, you can put other equipment down in there so it's not as visible in the tank. It's a lot less cluttered. Uh, which which is a nice little feature to it, but in my opinion, all the other stuff I mentioned before that, far more important, far more useful as far as applications for a sump. So once again, you know, maximum flow rate, maximum skim uh, extraction, uh, you know, natural refugium, uh, timeout for fish, uh, you know, just... In general, lots of great applications to a sump, which is what makes it the greatest application uh, for filtration in a tank. Now, you know, and then of course, uh, cost. Um, you know, with all the equipment and everything, yeah, there's the hassle factor, plumbing, uh, you know, to initially get it set up. But in terms of cost, when you factor in the cost of, say, a canister filter, like the Fluval FX6, a hang on back skimmer, maybe having to set up another little refugium on the side or something like that, uh, a do-it-yourself sump with decent a, a return pump and a, and a decent skimmer in there, much less hassle, uh, much more useful, much less cost. Okay, Don't be suckered by those overpriced sumps. They're worthless in my opinion. But 
anyways, that's all I've got, and thanks for watching.